Howdy everybody in YouTube land. I just came across something that I need to address before I get too carried away here. I'm actually working on another Macintosh portable and actually this one is mine. Uh, and what I'm doing here is I'm actually gluing support parts back into place because there's just pieces and parts broken everywhere. This one was broke. The One of the main hinge supports was cracked and broke, you know, I, it, it's hard to say what's happened. Uh, there's another, there's a few other little ears broke, these guys here, which are actually the hooks for the motherboard. And there's no point even gluing that one back on because the hook is just completely gone. So there's no point, you know. Anyway, so that's not what this video is about. This video is about this guy right here. This is the original Connor hard disk drive and these things have a proprietary connector cable that cannot be removed, okay? But uh, they designed these to be low power. They're using all low power components in the main board and they're using low spindle current. But there's an inherent problem with these that you need to be aware of if you own a computer with one of these drives. If you look very carefully, you see that little streak here? And you see the little goo? I, I couldn't figure out where that came from. It's like this, like almost like Coca-Cola spill, but it's not. And actually it accumulated up in here and it, it just completely ate away. And I washed that and I still can't get it all out. I'm going to have to get in there with the Q-tips. Well, I got to looking, you know what that actually is? That is the rubber gasket. There's a gasket that seals the drive internally. And that gasket has failed. It's turned into this muck. As you can see the residue of it down in there. See the, the shiny? Yeah, that's uh, that's the what's left of the gasket. It's turned to goo. So the only way I can fix that is to take it apart. And that's what this video is going to be about. Because I'm going to take this drive apart and inspect the platters and the head actuator assembly to make sure that there's no damage in there. And then we're going to take some silicone. The only stuff I have right now is this stuff right here. It's not RTV, but as long as it traps everything out, everything should be fine. I mean, this is just your average run-of-the-mill clear silicone. So I'm going to get this apart and inspect the damage. And hopefully we can recover it. I have not tested this drive, uh, if it works or not, and I'm not going to because if there's goo laying in here, I'm going to clean it up first before it spins up because it could throw the goo everywhere and completely destroy the drive if it hasn't already. Yeah, that's bad, just as I suspected. Look at all that goo. i got to get all of that out of there before I can actually fix this drive. That's pretty bad. I mean, that is bad. There's the dust filter. It's even gotten into the filter a little bit. Uh, and it's on the parameter too, so... Uh, yeah, you gotta be real careful. I don't even know how I'm gonna get all that out of there. Cause I can't wash the drive. I can't, you know, there's a lot of things I can't do. So, I'll be right back. Um, is this a single bladder drive? Yeah, it is. I can actually disassemble the drive, but yeah, that's too much work. Let's make sure the parts are free. They are. So, uh, we'll clean it up and come back to this. Okay, that's a lot better. Um, now, you got to be very careful. I took a microfiber and used the tip of my fingernail. You will need fingernails or some kind of flat blade in this. And there's, there's still a little bit of residue. I can't get it all out. Um, so you just take your fingernail or a flat blade wedge tool and just, just very carefully clean all that out first. Then put a little bit of alcohol on the new microfiber cloth and go around again. Okay? Do not touch the platter because these come real close to the borders do not touch the platter under any circumstances if you do you might as well stop now and throw the drive in the garbage uh, same thing goes for fingerprints anything do not touch the platter uh, a little speck of dust here and there is fine there is a catch there's a catch in the uh, drive lid to, to catch all the dirt anyway just make sure there's no large chunks in there and you can blow it with your breath if you have to and clean it out. Uh, anyway, so I got that cleaned. Now I gotta move on to the lid, clean it. And then I'm gonna lay a new bead of silicone down in there, put the lid on and let it dry. And I gotta be very, 
very light on the silicone, just a tiny bit, because if you put too much in there, and you go to clamp the lid on, it's going to ooze out, and it's going to get all over the place, the bladder and everything, and then it, it's just, it's done for. So you, you have to finesse. Just put a tiny itty bitty bead in that groove, unless you have O-ring material, because if you have O-ring material, you can, you know, just lay out a new O-ring, but until then, um, I can't do that. So, without further ado, let's check for any other rubber parts, stopping mechanisms, anything in the actuator arm that can cause a problem. No, I don't see any. So, uh, let's go ahead and clean the lid and put the drive back together. I'm kind of making this up as I go along. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? Instead of trying to get it in the groove, I'm just going to lightly go around the rim, just lightly with my finger in silicone. Just put a just put a light, thin coat around it. Because all we're trying to do really is seal it. Um, to get dust contaminants out that, you know, that's going to prove fruitless because I've already got a ton of dust in here. But aside from that point, we're going to uh, put a light coat. You know, all we need to do is seal it. We don't want a big heavy coat in the groove because I thought about putting it in the groove first but there's always a chance that it can run out, so I'm just gonna put a light coat on the rim itself, on the tip of the rim, and then see where it goes from there. So, um, let me do that real quick, and I'll be right back. That's all we needed was just a light coat on the outside. Just keep it away from the inside of the rim, you know. Uh, over on the edges, uh, top and bottom edges are fine because the platter's not near there, but right here on the two sides, even there, actually, I need to clean up a little better. Uh, if we have to, once the drive is assembled, we can glue it from the outside. I just wanted to get a little tiny bead on the rim, small enough to where when we put it together it won't squish out. So that's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and assemble it and I'll show you. And that's it. That's all she needed. Um, hopefully it works. You know, if, if it doesn't work, you won't see the video. Okay? But if you do see the video, then you know it worked. But uh, aside from that, I forgot to mention that when you have the lid off, the drive with the platter, uh, make sure you put it in a tote or a box or a cabinet or something out of the way so stereo dust particles don't keep flying on the platter because that would be bad. You know, um, I have the lid assembled. Now I'm going to go around, clean up, or go around the side with the bead of silicone, and then we're going to clean it up and seal it up and let it cure for 24 hours. And then we're going to try it out once I know it works. I'll add on to this video. If it doesn't work, you won't see this video. So, uh, oh, by the way, there's more of that friggin' slime I got to clean off of there. Actually, you know what? You are going to see the rest of this video because I want to be able to prove a point here. I uh, let it sit overnight, cured, and I put the portable back together and it didn't work. It gave me the click of death, so I was going to destroy the video, but I took the platter out to find out why. And it was nothing that I did because the gasket material stayed in the rim. It didn't, get, it didn't seep out. Everything was good. It sealed up perfectly, which I knew it was going to. But... Here's our problem. Ignore that, that's my thumbprints. Uh, you can see some of that goo. That is not the silicone. That was what was left of the gasket. I actually got on the platter and the head drug it around and destroyed it. So this drive was gone before I even started. But the reason why I want to finish this video and post it as a successful failure is to prove um, that Anytime you get these drives with the gasket failure, um, if the drive is still works, stop now and make up some kind of gasket. Either use silicone or maybe get some O-rings and cut them up, which then you leave gaps and cause problems, or get a piece of cork, put a piece of cork in there, something to go in there to seal it, okay, before the drive fails. Because if this goo gets all over the place, this is what happens. You know, I, the heads are destroyed. I mean, I can't do anything with that. I can probably clean the platter up and try to get everything off this platter and get it spick and span, you know, and put it in a different drive and still be able to get the data off of this platter. I can recover the data off of this platter if I wanted to. 
you know, and I'm not, I don't really care that much. I do and I don't care, okay? For me, I'm a computer archaeologist, which is something I made up because I collect the vintage computers not just for fun, you know, to experience how it was back in the day. For me, it's more of a curiosity. I only want the machines if they come with the hard drives. No, I don't care about the personal files that this person has, um, you know, created on the machine. That's not what I'm, you know, concerned about. What I am more interested in is how the computer was used, what type of person used it, how often it was used, what kind of work that was done, you know, just the type of software, you know, just an ex to explore how these machines were used in various different environments. That's what I'm curious about more than anything, like an archaeologist, you know, very similar. So my point of having these machines is not so much to use them because if you've seen one of these machines, you've seen them all. They all pretty much work the same. You know, you got System 6, System 7, Mac OS 8, you know, I mean, they're all the same. If you want a machine to use it, then just get you a Quadra or, you know, a Centris or, you know, a Compact Max, something to use the software that you were familiar with growing up or, you know, you used in your work, daily life, whatever. For me, it's not so much that. Because for me, to be quite honest, I'm kind of burned out on that stuff, you know. It's all the same, you know. I, I know the software, I've messed with the software, you know. There's some games I like to play, but honestly, I can play that in an emulator. Now, granted, it's not the same as a real machine, you know. And I, I've got plenty of machines. i got tons of PowerBook Duos, laptops I don't need anymore. The reason why I get these machines is to be able to see the data and how they were used, what kind of software it is, and honestly, I ran into some pretty rare software uh, going through some of these machines. Like, for example, I've got a laptop that came from Sybase, which I think became Oracle, but I could be wrong. And I got a ton of Sybase software, terminal software, lookup software, query, database server, all kinds of fun stuff, you know? I, mean, I like to toy around with software I haven't toyed around with before, but the problem is when I see this, it's done for. I mean, I can probably clean this platter up because I have another one of these drives which does work that goes to my other Macintosh portable that I restored about eight, two years ago or so. But I don't really don't want to destroy the drive just to see what's on here. But that is my mission, technically. That is uh, the prime directive for me. Um, but... I can probably clean this platter up and I can probably put it in the other drive, you know, take the platter out, put it in here and get it running again long enough to get the data off of, but I don't want to destroy the heads. So I don't know, I have to sit on the fence for a while. If I can get another one of these drives, it doesn't have to be the portable drive, it can be the 40 megabyte Macintosh Classic drive, because there were some of these used in Macintosh Classics. The, mechani the mechanics, the mechanism is the same. The only difference is the, the board and the spindle motor is a lower current motor, okay? So I can take the spindle motor out, transplant it into the drive, or I can just keep this drive as it is and just take the actuator arm out from the good drive and then clean the splatter up, put it together and get the data back. I have done it once. I haven't done it more than once, but I've only done it once and it did work. And actually, surprisingly enough, that drive still works today. The the 80 megabyte hard drive in the last video was my Macintosh Classic I had set up out here. That's the drive I did that on to get the data back. You know, I, I swap platters and all that stuff and I still use that drive and it still works. You know, so it is what it is. Don't try this with modern drives because they're almost impossible to deal with. And if you have a multi-platter drive, you've got you've to do some kind of compression ring tool because you have to pull all these platters up at the same time without them slipping laterally okay because if they rotate it will cause um, the cylinders to misalign you know and another thing you have to be careful with too is these heads um, oops these heads well I, they're destroyed so it doesn't matter but um you do not when you remove the drive platter you do not want to let these heads touch. You need to create like a jig to fit in here while you slide the heads off the platter to keep them apart because if they touch like that, it can actually misalign the heads. And then you'll have the problem.
problem with a misaligned head is you'll get the click of death. Why will you get the click of death? Because the head for the top side will no longer match cylinder wise to the bottom side. Because when you have a cylinder, you have head zero, head one. So if you ever do a disc scan, it moves to the next sector and goes head zero, head one, head zero, head one, head zero, head one. Well, not only are all the platters in alignment, they're also in alignment between top and bottom as well. You know, and you could knock that alignment out by screwing these heads up. So you have to be very, very careful when you do this. So, um, aside from that, that's all I have. So I would call this a successful failure. Success in the way I did the gasket, it was fine. Failure because the drive was already dead before I started. So, um, I wish I'd have had better news, but um, thank you for watching. And feel free to leave a comment.